you know, I thought it'd be nice if you could see the studio the way I see it. Like, this is where I'm at. It's, I'm in like a module. It surrounds me. Like, the uh, design philosophy of this place, because it's going to get pulled out and started again at some point. But even now, the philosophy of this place is like, think of the, like, um, you know, the, the uh, lunar capsule or, you know, the orbiting capsule, the LEM. <laughs> you know, or the command module of like, you know, the Apollo space missions, or the shuttle, you know, the space efficiency levels of all those controls. <laughs> that's, that's the touchstone for this studio. Anyway, I just want to make a quick, uh, a quick comment about upcoming content, which maybe might start today. What I'm basically doing is, um, I was watching Mad Malco's channel, and, um, and a couple of other channels have done it, and it's like Malco's done like my top 10 guitars and he's going through his guitars and it's fucking really interesting like some of it, you know, like his um, top choices because they might not be like his best guitars but they're, they're his best guitars in his, you know what I mean, in his mind. Um, well, I, I can't really show you my best guitars because like I'd end up showing you like none. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I mean, I, I have got some good things, you know I've got some, I have got some top end stuff. Um, but I am mostly a, a bottom feeder. Um, I am I am the catfish at the bottom sucking on the mud of Stag and Harley Benton. <laughs> but uh, but I love it there. Okay, it's, and it's nutritious, and I love it. <laughs> and um, but yeah, uh, you know, like I'm a strong believer. If you can't do it with a Behringer pedal, you, it, it's your fault. It's down to you. You can't do it then. Okay, you can't do it then. Um, you know, nothing's stopping you from having, like, top-end ears, okay? Nothing's stopping you from having top-end fingers, right? Do you get what I'm saying? It's like, you you know, to a certain extent, you can blame your equipment, but I think there's far too much emphasis um, in, in the sort of recent guitar boom that we are definitely experiencing, and I think maybe, you know, lockdown was a lot to do with that. Um, but um, certainly that in the last five years, you know, there's a traceable spike in interest in, in sales. It's, this isn't something that I'm pulling out of my ass exactly. Um, it, but it's, um, there is a big surge. Like we have seen before. I mean, I've been playing for 30 years now and like, you know, I have seen trends. I have seen things come and go and I've seen, you know, yeah, certain like patterns in, you know, there are surges of, of interest. Quite often it's a band or a particular person that might bring that on. Anyway, so what I'm doing is I'm going to take you through all my gear. I'm going to say this is what it is and um, this is why I use it. Now bear that in mind because um, like the, it will, I will just title it as the piece of gear and I'm literally, I'm going to do everything. And I mean everything. I mean every fucking thing. Yeah, I'm going to do, for instance, there will be an episode on these that have been very pleasing for the money. The Humble Patchley. There will be an episode on every single thing that I use and why I use it. And um, and wonderful news is, okay, yeah, I um, put the money in today to the, to, to the fellow's account. Um, and uh, I have bought the Golden Wonder. So you'll see, probably not an unboxing, because I don't like unboxing videos. I, you know that I, I, can I say it's not that I don't like unboxing videos I don't like doing unboxing videos and you want to know why because like that's like a personal joy getting something out of a box is a personal joy and it kind of like you know never know until you open the box what's in the box so unless you fake it up and you check it all first and then do it back up and then do your unboxing video you're actually undertaking a massive fucking risk really not, not, not least of which, you know, if they know the seller is on the video. I have issues with unboxing videos, but, um, but that's not uh, to me doing unboxing videos. For me, you know, unboxing a parcel, it's like a, it's like a private Christmas party that I have. <laughs> I mean, it really, I actually get a great joy. I mean, when I bought, you know, I mean, the Vox especially, the little Stomp Lab, I bought that off of Amazon, and getting that through, you know, getting that parcel was like such an exciting day. Another one I specifically remember as being just a really enjoyable experience was getting the um, the Batio, the Michelangelo Batio pedal, um, just through the post and like just the way that it was packaged and all the gump that came with the pedal and that, it just made it feel like a worthwhile experience. And then plugging the pedal in 
and um, and literally like oh, and and understanding within five minutes that this is a tube scream and not a clon because like um, a lot of videos put it out as a clon and so I thought I was buying a sort of clonish thing, but happily I bought the um, best tube screamer I've um, ever owned, and I uh, have owned some proper tube screamers, but never one that maybe I don't know maybe I've got like bias or something maybe I've got bias I, but I try really hard not to have and um, and I love that Michelangelo Batio pedal I think you know in the same way um, like the first episode is going to be um, one of the axles and like in the same way that I bought the actual Telecaster I thought you know because I wanted a, a classic Telecaster as a studio voice and a classic Stratocaster as a studio voice. I already have a great Stratocaster, but I wanted a three single coil one, the vintage voice as a studio guitar. Because it's very different, okay, to, the, to my Strat, you know, the classic Strat. And, uh, and, and I remember getting the Axel Telecaster and thinking, this is really good, I'm gonna look out for a, a, an Axel Strat. And that's why I bought the Axel Strat. Like that is honestly, so quite often when I find a brand and I find it extremely agreeable, um, I think, oh, I'll try something else for this. Now, um, the Tom's Line Engineering, or wherever they are, that do the Michelangelo Batio pedal, maybe if I show you, like, because names are so fucking generic, if I show you, it'll trigger your mind of what the... You know, these people, right, those people, they do the little metal bit that they make a big song and dance about, but, you know, those people. It's just a little, you know, for the price, which is reasonable, um, you know, it's like, you, they're really well made, like nicely put together, but most importantly, great sounding. I'm only judging on that pedal, but uh, I need a rat pedal. And there's one called the Black Teeth, made by these guys. And it's three, it's a three, it's a, it's a rat clone with like three, it's got like solo turbo and dirty or something like that. But it's three rats in one pedal. And I, and it's called the Black Teeth. I mean, come on, are you serious? That's that's my pedal. <laughs> so I've got to get one of those. But, uh, and, and I will say, when I bought the Axel Tele, I was so impressed, and then I thought, oh, it'd be great when I buy the Strat if it was an Axel Strat, and I got one. That Axel Strat is fucking everything I could have possibly wanted it to be. For, for a guitar that cost me 70 fucking quid, and didn't have, had never been played. It had never been played, it didn't have a mark on it. Neither did the telly. Both those axles like did not have a fucking mark on them. Um, no, no sign of ever being played. But but signs of being laid up somewhere. But um, yeah, that worked out agreeably. So it's like yeah, when I find something a brand that's kind of new to me, uh, I do tend to pursue it. Anyway, so that's what I'm going to be doing. So upcoming videos are going to be like title. I'm going to do like maybe I'm probably going to do it in like steps of the series. Um, so, uh, or order of importance, or whatever, but I'm going to, uh, it's not just going to be dull and dry, it'll be my usual dry-witted nonsense. Anyway, a last one on the two grand flamenco guitar, which I haven't tuned. because this is the 30 quid encore I was just seeing if I could like you know but there's no there's no escaping that I think to be honest you could tell then that that was a 30 quid encore <laughs> I'm sorry um, yeah. uh, sorry there's no escaping that one is there So uh, I'm going to get new strings on them both, then that'll be a bit more fair. Because to be honest, you know, six months ago they were pretty, uh, they were a lot closer. Anyway, so look out for the new ones. Oh, finally, the the gold top, the not the gold top, the uh, golden wonder. I've got to give Chris the snail driver a shout out because without your help, Chris, I actually wouldn't at all possibly be able to get that guitar. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart and. Uh, 
that Telecaster right behind me, that's got provenance. If you go to like, uh, is it Jeff Mutton's channel? It's Keith Sutton, but I think he calls this channel Jeff Mutton. If you go there, you'll find videos with me playing that at a gig in uh, the vestry, uh, when it was like a sort of grifter, uh, space baby, the join sort of like get together as we jammed again for the first time in 20 years or whatever it was. Anyway, I love you all and bye now.